G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Man. In this video, I'm going to show you what happens when you grow corn in winter. That's right, I do these crazy food growing experiments so that you don't have to. <laughs> well, you can if you want, it's fun. Let's get into it. So at the moment we're in the middle of winter and to the untrained eye this corn looks like it's growing pretty good but it's not in fact it is completely stunted and not producing what it's supposed to produce and that is good full large corn cobs this particular variety of corn is called jolly roger <laughs> and apart from being a very jolly name it's a really good variety to grow. It's a heirloom. It means you can grow the same corn year after year from your own seed. It's also a really tasty variety of sweet corn. The type of corn that you really love to roast over a campfire or douse with some butter and have a good chew on it. This is actually our second crop of corn in succession. The first crop we grew in our summer, which is the right time to grow corn, just a few months ago and that grew really well and produced nice cobs of corn so I thought you know what let's try and get a succession crop in using some of the seed that I got from the previous crop just grown a few months earlier I knew that it would be growing into winter but I wondered would this crop grow and develop properly just like it did in summer as it went through autumn and into winter and now I can share these results with you Initially the corn grew really well, it germinated easily, I had a whole heap of seedlings growing, they grew strong, but as the weather cooled down inevitably it started slowing down. And once we started to hit those winter months it pretty much stopped growing altogether. Corn is a type of grass, yeah, a really big one, but just like your normal lawn in winter time it stops or at least slows down considerably. And even in a subtropical climate like ours where, you know, the winters don't get that cold, most of the time our winter days, especially if it's sunny, is around 20 degrees Celsius. But that's still enough to slow down a variety of grass, including our good Jolly Roger friend corn here. By the way, I like growing corn in these high-sided raised beds. I know some people might be thinking, this is ridiculous. How are you going to reach your corn and tend to it and all that? It's way too high. It's not really. When corn develops, usually the cobs or the ears of corn are at a height where I can easily reach them. And generally, when your corn is finished developing, you can just pull the whole plant out anyway to harvest it and then just refurbish the bed. So it's not a problem growing corn in a high-sided bed like this. The problem is that it gives an illusion that it is actually full height and it is not if you took the 70 or so centimeters of height from this raised bed and you drop this down most of this corn would only come up to neck height max which is not a very good growth at all for this type of corn so it's pretty much in a catatonic state and it's not going to get any better so there are three things mainly the first thing is that the corn didn't develop because it has stopped growing due to winter. Let me bring you in closer and I'll show you the second thing and that is about the cobs. I'll just pick a random one here. You can see how small it is. It's browned off which usually means it's ripe for the picking. If I pull this back here and expose the cob Not only is it small, but how many kernels can you count on that? There's about five kernels. They're not too bad, but you're not going to feed a family with this. So that brings me on to the third point, and that's pollination. The flowers here, they drop the pollen. It goes on to the top of the corn. 
and pollinates the cob. Plants that are typically grown in warmer weather, like corn and even tomatoes is another good example, they don't pollinate very well when the weather cools down. With corn, it's not that it's just stopped growing, because that's a factor, but it's also that the pollen doesn't work as well in the colder weather either. Have you ever heard of cat face on tomatoes? Well, that's a similar thing. You can grow tomatoes here easily through our winter time. But sometimes when it gets really cold, you'll get these deformities on tomatoes. And that deformity is caused by the pollen not being able to fertilize the flower and therefore create a good formed fruit. You get deformities because it hasn't been pollinated correctly due to the pollen being tainted because of the colder weather. So not only has the corn stopped growing, but the pollination has been retarded simply because the weather is just too cold for it. Here's a bigger cob, probably one of the bigger sized ones. Let's see if this one's any better. Oh, oh well. There you go. It's not too bad. You're gonna get some exceptions, I suppose but it's not great either, is it? Oh, crikey, it's hard as a rock too. I could probably use that for seed, but then again, I probably won't because the seed may have been, you know, damaged because of the cold weather. It's gone really hard, but <laughs> maybe it froze overnight. So what am I gonna do now? Well, I'm gonna cut it down because it's just a waste. It's no good growing there. All it's doing at the moment is because the sun is low in winter, comes across this side, it's shading out my crops of spring onions in the other bed. And why leave it sit there interfering with another crop when I could cut it down and let that crop grow really well as it should at this time of year because I've planted it at the right time, unlike the corn. And that's the big lesson. You can do these experiments and I'm glad I did, I've learnt a lot by trying to get a second crop in of corn. Perhaps I should have just succession sowed if I wanted to get more corn in that season. But I thought I'd just try to do it again in bulk. It didn't work because I ran out of time. And speaking of time, it goes to show you just how critical timing is when you're growing your vegetables. When you get the timing wrong for a particular crop in your climate or area, you can expect at the very least that that crop won't grow to its full potential. At the very worst, you can expect a complete failure like this one is. I'm gonna pull all that out so it's not shading out those other spring onions and other crops around it. I'm gonna mulch it and put it back into the bed. So it's not gonna to go to waste. It will go back into the bed as mulch and worm food and improve the soil that's already there. Well, now is as good a time as any. Oh.
Well, that's all that done. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big, don't grow corn through winter, thumbs up, and share my video around, because that helps me out heaps, well, my channel out heaps. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I just wanted to say to all of you guys who have said good day to me over the past few weeks, which has been a lot, whether it be out at a nursery somewhere, or at the expo yesterday, when I went there with Nina, there was, well, a good dozen of you said hello, and it's really nice for you to come up to me and say good day. I enjoy it. Let me know what you're growing if you see me out. Uh, say hello, ask me a question, whatever. Uh, don't bite. Uh, in fact, I just appreciate your support. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Cheers.